Hello, everyone. This is Richard. Hi. And Donna. Hello. Uh, Cribs. Donna and Richard Cribs uh, has endured a lot of pain with the CDFA and USDA. On May 28th, uh, a notice was put on their property, taped with 100 mile hour tape, and it stated that they will be, uh, or that they have until May 29th, 1.53 p.m. to uh, do an appeal. Richard, could you tell us about that appeal? Yes, sir. We came home. I'd been at the doctor's office with my wife. I came home, and I found that tape to the to the fence. By the time we got home, it was too late to call. So I called the next morning at 6.30 in the morning, and uh, I had a recording saying that uh, their office hours were from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and so I called back at 7.05, and they told me due to the heavy traffic because of this disease that nobody was able to answer the phone. So... Uh, I left my, my name, phone number, address, and the reason I was calling to get the appeal, and, uh, but I didn't let it go at that. I looked in the phone book. I got the address for the uh, CDAF in Sacramento, one in San Diego, and one in Ontario. So I went to the Ontario office and tried to talk to somebody there. I did talk to a veterinarian that would come out to talk to me, and uh, he said, well, you know, if the paper says that. That's what they have to do. He tried to explain to me how serious the disease is. Well, I understand how serious the disease is, but I tried to explain to them that all of our birds were healthy. There was none had, we haven't had any birds die in forever, it seems like. But, um, so I came home and I was doing some other stuff and uh, the gentleman did take a picture of my paperwork and he had another gentleman call me at about 1.45 in the afternoon, but I never got a call back from the, uh, uh, Sacramento so from the appeal process right so okay I uh, he said you need to call right away and send a, uh, a text to them stating that you need the appeal so I went ahead and uh, called the number back right away and the lady said I told her I said look I've only got a couple of minutes before I have to do this she said that she would send a uh, email to Sacramento explaining that uh, I'm calling and that I will be sending a text so I did send the text and uh, the next morning I had an email telling me, I'm sorry, we need uh, more information. Please send a, a picture of your paperwork. And I did. And uh, then the next morning I received one that said that I'd been denied, that I'd waited too long to appeal. Wow. And so I did that again. I sent it back again. And, but, and but so see, they waited. He, he was there early in the morning and they waited till like one something in the afternoon before they called him back. Right. An appeal usually in, in real life takes 72 hours to give people a chance to be in shock the first day right. and then two days to process an appeal. Right. Well, and, and on this uh, paper, the initial paperwork, it says June 18th, but I guess according to them, the destruction shall take place no later than 6 p.m. on June 18th. Right. Well, Did they give you any notice uh, when they're going to come back to kill no, the chickens? No. And I did call and I asked them, I said, listen, you know, I don't want my wife to be here alone by herself when you guys come to destroy the birds <clears throat> can you please at least give me a day maybe a, maybe one or two days notice so that i can make arrangements to be at home and uh no they did not the, the gentleman said well I'll, I'll tell somebody but uh, it never happened when they showed up they just showed up i was at the hospital with my son-in-law trying to comfort my daughter and i got a telephone call from my brother-in-law saying that they were here with the police and they were on the property already and so I just started heading home from Fontana. <clears throat> now, May 28th, May 29th, 30th, 31st, the 1st, you said they came back on... Uh, no, on Sunday. They came for on this. Sunday, yes. Yes, they yes. did. On Sunday, they came uh, and they wanted to inspect your birds, right? Yes, they did. Okay. Could you tell us about that, Donna? Okay. So we, we said, can you do them at the fence because we don't want anyone coming on our property private property and so he said yes we could do that so we caged him up and took him up to the front and one at a time we handed him over the fence and he swabbed them there was 10 birds and he said there won't be any further action until you hear from the test results and he said that'd be about three or four days for the test results to come back and 
Now, that was this Sunday, right? That this was last this Sunday. last Sunday. And that is June uh, 2nd. I think so. Yes. Right? Yes. So on June 2nd, Sunday, they came and told you there will be no more killing until they came back with a test result. Yes. But on June 1st was Saturday. The 31st was uh, Friday. Is that right? Uh, you get, yeah. And then 31st is Friday. 30th is Thursday. Uh, 29th is Wednesday and and Tuesday. A week ago. Two, a week ago, Tuesdays when you got the yellow form. So uh, is that correct? Yeah, May yeah. May 28th. Yes. yes. May 28th, Tuesday. All right. So we're talking a Tuesday of last week, and then all of a sudden they came out on Sunday and they tested and they swabbed. Yes. Your birds, and they said they're not going to come back until you get a test results. Yes. Did they tell you how long the test results going to take to get back? Three to four days. Three to four days. Did you ever see a test result? Not yet. Not Today's the fourth day. Oh, this is the fourth day from the time it was tested. Yes. 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 What, what day so today's, is it today? Today's it's Thursday. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Today's Thursday. Monday. Monday. Okay. So on Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, so Wednesday. basically, they shouldn't have been back to kill any chicken. Until the 6th. That's right. Right? Yeah. Yes. But yeah. they didn't. They came back on the 4th. Yes. Yes. All right. So so on Sunday, they came and they lied to you because the test result hasn't come back. Today is the 6th. But on Tuesday, on Tuesday, they came back and killed your chickens. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. 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 But I'll say, I don't think that this man lied. Oh, I think what he said was when when he, he, when he got back to us. the office, he said when he got back to the office, he would uh, note it in the computer, and there'd be no further action. That I, you know, because my wife asked him, says now before we get the results, will they kill any of our birds? And he says, no, they shouldn't. He says what we'll do is we'll enter it in the computer, and what we've given you now will kind of like supersede what you got on your fence. Right. So we were going with that, but on Tuesday, so it was Sunday that he came on Tuesday, which would have been what the second day right because it's working day so the second day was when the uh the, everybody showed up at our property here and started doing the birds and my wife did show them this paperwork and they said, and they said it didn't matter it didn't okay matter. so so what you're saying is this is george that you saw yeah. right yeah. And, and they said george didn't matter well see here's here's the thing uh george is my father's name so you're probably right he probably didn't lie he probably uh told you the truth and the way I think this is going on here is one department of the CDFA in the CDFA and the USDA is not talking to each other. Yeah. That's, some, that's what yeah. I think. It's right. I, I, they don't have organization and communication right. within the organization. Because this form, I like this form because on the back it's in Spanish, which we have been finding that a lot of the documents aren't in Spanish. And a lot of folks... Um, you know, only get all their paperwork in, in English. So let's say George is honest and he did his job. And so the bad guys came on Tuesday, not giving George the opportunity yes. to to uh, tell them what's going on. So you see, the problem here is, again, the CDFA. Uh -huh. It's not our fault that they're coming in here with their staff. We've got documentation. And then what I love this is George has got his name and phone number on here. Yeah. Most, most of these people don't. You got a phone number in here, uh, Richard. Yes. And it didn't do you any good for the appeal. No. Sir. Right? No. Okay. So we're going to go to Tuesday now and talk about Michael Abbott. Right. And he's the supervisor. He's the supervisor. Let me get a better picture here. You talk to him more than I do. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what happened at the, uh, on Tuesday? Who answered the gate? Uh, I did. I was the only one at home. Okay. And um, I didn't have my glasses on, and they couldn't start coming, uh, saying they're going to come kill our birds, and they come rushing all these papers at me to sign. And I said, I can't see them. I don't have my glasses. And, and they just kept pushing them in my face. And so I just tried the best I could, and, and then I, I had to sign them uh, under threat of going to jail. Who threatened you to go to jail? Well, the guys that came here um, about, I'll say, 
two weeks before they came and showed up like this, two to three. And they came and they they said, we want to come on your property and test your birds. I said, no, you cannot come on my property to do this. And, and they said, well, we're going to get a warrant. We're going to kill your birds and we're going to, and you're going to go to jail. And that was, and they were wearing uh, fatigues, yes. army fatigues. They were wearing army fatigues. Army fatigues. <laughs> and they came up to my door. They didn't just come to the fence like all the rest of the people do. Oh. All of them were wearing army fatigues? Just, just him that I noticed. Okay. The one that was talking to me. He didn't tell me his name, didn't show me his badge, uh, just threatened. And so I told him to get off my property. Right. And uh, so they did, and I was very angry, and I, I said, you mean you just want to come steal our birds? Right. As they were leaving. But, um, but anyway, I was very angry. Um, so, they, they, they always come on Sunday, which... Um, well, is that your day your uh, Sabbath for you guys? Yes, it well, is. he was I my was, husband at church. The first time it happened when they came on Sunday, I, I was at church. My wife has a hard time sleeping at night, so she can't get up. She uh, she called me and told me that I need to get home, and she was all upset. So I came home, and she told me what had happened. I said, well, a judge has to be on a bench before they can issue a search warrant. It's not going to happen on Sunday, I don't believe. So I said, it's okay. At that point, I did go and get the no trespassing, a private property, no trespassing signs. I posted on both gates, front gates, so that people coming through would know better than just to walk up to my door unless they really had a warrant or something like this. Um, you know, I understand what they're trying to do. I understand that they're trying to save the uh, chickens and all this, and I understand the disease is very bad, but I think their method of how they handle it is improper. I think that they uh, should take the time to be a little bit more understanding. People, these are people's pets, uh, it's, you know, and it's our property, and you don't like to have people just storming in and taking over. If they would take the time to explain to people and be a little bit more sympathetic and maybe even more sympathetic about the way they're t they, uh, killing they the birds. They could tell us, we, we, we've got, it would be show a us lot proof better. that the birds are sick and, and that this has to be done. Then let the people do it to their own animals. Don't, don't come in and just take over and, and do it to us. We would, we would comply if, if they show us proof that the birds are sick in our area and, and that it has to be done. Let us do it ourselves. Don't come and just take over government uh, bullying and take over and do it to us. Well, you know, we traditionally know the government to operate Monday through Friday during business hours. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a funny thing is they also operate on Mother's Day, Memorial Day, all the holidays. Yeah. So it's kind of like very unchristian, very un-American, their right. procedure, yeah. very, uh, their tactics are... Very questionable. Now, so we're here on Tuesday. You let them in, and but they gave you all this paperwork before you, they let you in. You yeah, let them at in, the right? Gate. Okay. So at the gate, you're bombarded with all this documentation. Yeah. And then um, you signed everything except for this third sheet of paper. I notice. Yes. Yes, and she wrote down refused on it. Okay. On this document, can you tell me more about this document? Okay. It tells us that we have. Uh, they want us to give permission to kill our birds, yeah, and, and and saying that um, they said something else. Oh, you waiver your right for appeal. Yeah, and waiver our right for appeal. In other words, we can never appeal any anymore if we sign that paper. Wow! Did they give you an opportunity to contact an attorney? No. Nope. No. And um, that were you here? You said you were here alone, right? Yes. Did you ever get a chance to get your glasses at the time to no. read this? Okay, and um, how's your eyesight? I have cataracts. I need to get cataract surgery right now. So if you read a piece of paper, do you require glasses? Yes. Okay. Well, do you have a handicap placard? Are you just considered no, disabled? Um, I need to get to the doctor to get that because I could get one for my spine. Yeah. So basically, I would definitely say that you need a little assistance in reading paperwork, right? Yes. Okay. And then the gentleman you talked to about uh, making sure that you were here when uh, yes. they came to protect yes. your wife? Yes, sir. What did he say? He said that he would tell somebody, but he never mentioned the name of somebody he would tell. And evidently, he didn't 
I, I don't know whether he told somebody or not. So, you know, it's just... But who did you talk to? I don't remember the You're, gentleman's name. Okay, but you did talk to somebody. Yes, sir, I and did. And then... The, the Ontario office. Yes. The Ontario office. So you, you talked to somebody on Ontario office to tell them that you need to be here to help your wife. Yes, sir. They didn't seem to care, did they? No, sir. He just said, well, he in a way, he just said, look, I'll, I'll tell somebody. He didn't... He might have mentioned somebody's name, but I didn't catch that either. We had a, a lot of things going on with my brother, my son-in-law, and my sister-in-law, and just a lot of uh, stress going on in our family to start with. And then we have this on top of it. So right. Well, so now now they're starting to kill your chicken. You let them have access into your property, and I noticed your property's broken up in half. Yes. Front half is the house, the yard that we're in, and the back half is what. Richard's Just playground? Farm. Yeah, my playground. <laughs> my playground, yeah. Yeah. All right, so what happened? You were sitting uh, on your, this I, side I, of the fence, right? Yeah, I was on this side of the fence, right up by the fence so that I could see the whole farm. Okay. And uh, I wanted to make sure they weren't going to sh shoot our van or our travel trailer that's back there or our sheds. And uh, uh, I tried to get the police to come I'm sorry, back. you said shoot? Yeah, what? they were shooting. They were shooting they the They were ducks. carrying weapons? Yes. They were carrying some kind of weapon, and they were shooting the ducks and the, and the chicken that was loose out there. And uh, I heard about four pops, and um, they, they were all around behind the, the travel trailer in the van and, and chasing after them. And uh, I, I was really concerned that they was going to shoot holes into them and to our travel trailer and van and the sheds. Yeah. And I tried to get the police to come back there when they were done and go with me to, to verify if anything was damaged and they wouldn't come with me. The police? Yeah, they would not come with me to do that. Yeah. Where did the police stay? They were up here. They were stay up here, but they didn't go into the back? No, they wouldn't they... go back there at all. Wow. They, uh... They, Were they here to keep you under control, Donna? Or? I guess. Yeah. They, uh, the reason they uh, probably had An to shoot. An old woman us. like me. <laughs> no, you don't look old. You look kind of dangerous, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the reason they had, uh, I believe, to shoot the animals was because our ducks, some of our ducks, and I was our geese, they'd fly. <laughs> our geese are so heavy they can't fly. They're just obese, right? Right. And the ducks. Uh, they're not obese, but they can fly, but they never leave the yard. They'll fly from the front to the back, and that's about it. Okay. So I think that's why they, you know, there's no way they could catch them. They were using nets. Them. They tried it. They tried to use nets on them. They but did I think use nets. They did. And, and then, and then they, the ones they couldn't use nets on, they were shooting. Now uh, I understand you took some pictures. Yes, I took pictures, but I didn't. Uh, think to do it until they were almost through and they were packing up um, because I was on the phone with my brother and sister-in-law because there was nobody here with me and so I needed somebody to help me know what to do and I was on the phone with them and I didn't think to get my camera out but I got pictures of them packing up and they had this big plastic bag uh, and uh, they had the, their trash cans that they were going to use the gas and which I think is inhumane to the animals still flop around and squawk inside those gas cans. Well, the Geneva Convention forbids us using gas on humans, so why should we use it on our pets? Right. You know, and right. uh, so what, an unusual what have you learned of. from this? Uh, from now on, I suggested that anytime somebody comes on your property that's not a guest, you turn on the camera, put them on video, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes, that's always. That's the best way to keep yourself safe, especially when you're by yourself. Yes. yes. You know? Yes. And nobody can tell you you cannot turn your phone on. Right. You know, there's there's actually, you guys don't look uh, like you'll hurt each other, but it's against the law to take um, the phone off of your spouse. It's a felony. Yeah. So if Donna wanted to take a picture of you smiling yeah you got a letter you yeah. grab that it's a felony so we need to get that information out to everybody yes the yeah. law enforcement is not our friend yeah. i took pictures of the law enforcement being here and they were talking to my husband and i got pictures of that okay good they were the california highway patrol the, that's newsom's boys aren't they 
Yeah, I guess so. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it seems like all this stuff started after Governor Newsom became governor. Yeah. He didn't vote for him. Well, good. You guys are smart folks. Yes. Uh, hopefully you uh, sign our petition to recall Governor Newsom. But let's stick with this. A lot of people yes. get upset with me because I, I deter from my interview. But this is, this is not just an interview. It's also an education to educate folks. Yes. Well, I think All right? that's part of it because it didn't happen until after he got in office. Right. And then a lot of folks don't understand is people like you in their 30s, you know, need to get updated with these media devices yes. you got a very small phone there yes. very small phone you need a giant one like i have yes. all right yes. so all right so okay so we've got the killing going you know yeah uh, so they they you heard four pops right yeah uh what happened then um and then i saw him go in the chicken house and they were starting to go in i have very expensive peacocks back there they're worth 250 to 300 dollars each uh, they're full grown now. They're two years old and productive. And uh, I raised them since they were two and a half to three months old. And so they were in there when they were getting ready to get them. And then all of a sudden they came wait a minute, out. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you said you had two hundred fifty dollars, but uh, the four birds they had already killed. What were they? One bantam rooster. How long did you have that rooster for? About seven years. Wow, my son's seven years old. Yeah. He's priceless. Yes. Yeah. You know? How about your uh, the other three? They were uh, mallard ducks. They were hatchlings from our purebred stock that we had bought from Murray McMurray Hatchery about... Um, it's been a while. Uh, it's been a while. Right. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just want to make six sure... six years ago. So we've got three dead ducks and one dead uh, priceless bird. Check. A rooster. A rooster. Right? Rooster. Okay, and then what happened? I don't want to try to make you cry, Donna. I'm just trying to... No, the bugs are... Okay. Um, then they came out of the chicken house and just started standing around under the tree. Uh, you know, I know sometimes they pause a little bit, but they're pausing quite a long time, and so I started to wonder what's going on. So I went up to the front fence, and my husband was already up there talking with them, and I said, what's going on? And they said... Well, we think we're in the wrong zone, and and uh, this is not the red zone like over in Paris where where they bid killy birds. Right. And uh, I said, "Oh, my birds are dead, but but you're sorry." They said they're sorry, and uh, so I, I at that point I was just pretty appalled, and you know they can't even get their act together. They, they have no um, communication, evidently, um, in, among their um, organization. And so then I went and, and then I went and got my camera and was taking pictures of everything before they left. Okay. And um, now you said you had came here and you were up in the front, Richard. What, right, what, came, what happened? I, when I came in, the uh -huh. patrol was at the gate. They said, "Do you are you the owner of the property?" I said, "Yes, I am." And, so he just let me walk right by him and made sure my wife was all right. And then uh, I asked the highway patrol, you know, I said, the, the chickens haven't broken any speed laws, so why are you guys here? And he kind of laughed. He goes, well, sis, we're here to keep the peace. We're a state entity, and these guys are state entities, so we have to, you know, come here to keep the peace, make sure there's nothing, you know, just to keep the peace. So... Uh, like my wife said, they were, I could hear, <clears throat> I heard a couple of shots. And then my uh, next thing I know, uh, I heard them hollering at the guys in the back. Some guy over here was telling them to stop or whatever. So they just kind of halted for a little while. And I waited, and then they were, two of the guys, Mike and another guy, were out front. And so I went out front to see what was going on. And he says, we think that we might have got the uh, wrong uh, area. And that, uh, so... He said, we're going to hold it right there until we get, they were, in, they were trying to get in touch with Sacramento. Now, Mike and his group that came out here, uh, they were under the impression that they were coming to the right address, they were going to do the right thing. And so Mike was very upset uh, that they had given him the wrong information. And I, when I was on the way home from the hospital with my son-in-law, I called my wife and I said, you know, uh, well, all we can do is just 
comply, we can't try to impede their uh, in what they're trying to do. We can't try to impede it, but we can tell them we definitely think it's wrong what they're trying to do. But anyways, I went out front and I was talking to Mike, and he said, we definitely, we, we got to stop. I said, we're, we're sorry about the birds that have died. We can't replace them. So, I mean, there's nothing we can do to bring them back. So we, we, we will reimburse you for those birds. Did they say how much they're going to reimburse you? No, he didn't say how much they were going to. But the idea was it wasn't, it was the fact that they entered my property and they started doing things and uh, without really, I mean, they, they believed they were doing the right thing because they were told this is where it was at. But when they finally got hold of Sacramento, then Sacramento, somebody in Sacramento, there, they've got their wires crossed and they're sending these guys out who are trying to do their job. And you know, it's just like it's unfair to those guys as well as to us as well. Right. But it definitely made me feel like, you know, they just violated my constitutional rights by coming on my property. Uh, the, maybe and I told these guys. Them while they were coming, they had no right to be doing this to us. Right. They had no right to come in here like this. And they don't care. Did they're they, very hard faced, they don't care. They, the people have said uh, you should sue them. Do you have any idea who to sue? Uh, I've been trying to call people, trying to. Uh, I think we should do a class action suit. All all of us get together. This happened to, and get a class action suit going. Not just for the monetary, but for our right. our constitutional rights, property rights, privacy rights that have been. Uh, we've been invaded. Right. Well, and, this is the state of California. And any attorney that will take up that class action lawsuit uh, will probably have uh, a problem with their uh, licensing yeah. because the state controls yeah, everything here. Afraid. Yeah. Exactly. So we need somebody strong and bold that isn't going to be afraid. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so bottom line to recap this, they came on May 28th and uh, a week later, boom, they showed up to kill your chickens. Even though the guy on Sunday came out, two days before they came out to kill your chickens or birds, uh, stated that it will be until June 6th, which is today. Right, right. We uh, should know one yes. way or the other today. Whether They said that they send the, uh, the when they swab them, they send uh, the test to two independent laboratories to be tested. And he says it takes probably three to four days. And that's the same thing Mike told me, because when they did halt the uh, execution of all the birds, eradication of them, they uh, immediately started swabbing the samples of the birds that were here. Right. So that they could send that off. And, and Mike told me too, says, Rich, it'll be three to four days before we get the test back. Well, that's the same thing that Georgia told me just a couple of days before. Right. So we just, uh, at that point, he says, now if your birds come back and it tests positive, we'll have to euthanize the birds. And he said, but also, if, it, if there's an outbreak of it in your area close by you, if we find a bird with a Newcastle disease you know, had, in this had, area. But I don't believe did, them anymore because well, it's sold us so many different well, things. Well, the thing is, is you did say George, and I think you're saying this because you are true Christians. And you do believe in, in good of people, right? Yes. But you did say George told you the truth. Can I just tell you that we've not seen one test result yet? Yes, I'm, I yeah. say yet because I am also a positive person. You, you, you see, George says there's going to be a test result that you can see today. Yeah, we haven't seen anything yet. Right, but uh, what I'm saying is true. we haven't seen it. With what we've been doing, I've been doing it for a month. Carrie's been doing it for two months, and um, we haven't seen a test result. Yeah, he didn't say that he would show us the test results. He said if the test results were negative, that we would hear nothing back. Uh -huh. But if the test results were positive. Then they would have to come to kill the birds. They didn't say they would show me the results. Okay, so they they didn't say they were going to show you the results. No. So, but he did say that it was positive they would come and kill the birds. Right. So is that why they came on Tuesday then? No, because on Tuesday well, they hadn't even know. had the results back yet. They, you know, it was only the second day. They take three to four days to get the results. That's what back. they said. Right. So what I'm trying to say to you is that it doesn't matter what George says. Doesn't matter what Mike says, right. they're coming to kill our birds. Yes. Yeah. Right? Is yeah. that? I mean, that's that's what we're learning here. Right, bottom yeah. line. I, yeah. I, I, we have uh, no peace, knowing you know day by day when's it going to happen again. Exactly. We can't yeah. take the birds anywhere. Oh, we don't. Because then and, you are considered a quarantine area. Yes. Right. You're not in the red zone. 
Not in the kill zone. That's right. That's what they said. Right. But you can't move your birds. Yeah, we can't move our birds. But they said we are in quarantine, even though they have no proof that our birds are not healthy, which they are. So I'm what are you going to do when they come back again? Well, if they, sh if they show us a court order. I'm going to make sure I, warrant, I ask for that next time. If they show us a court order and they have a warrant, there's not a lot we can do. But did they come on. with a warrant on Tuesday? Uh, I, don't I don't remember know. seeing one. Really? The, the policeman came to my door, and uh, he wanted to come in the house, and I wouldn't let him in the house. I said, just a minute, I'm not dressed. So I went and got my bathrobe on and came outside. He didn't show me anything there. And then I went out to the fence, and they started shoving all this paperwork at me. Okay. Telling, telling me that they were here to destroy our birds and then shoving the paperwork at me. And I don't remember seeing a warrant. Okay. So they don't have a warrant. You're going to stand uh, and make sure they don't enter your property, right? That's right, right. And you're going to plead the Fifth Amendment? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. If they do have a warrant, there's nothing you can do? We, all we can do is tell them that we believe it's wrong and tell them that we feel like they're... Uh, well, if if they could, if they if they could show me proof that there is well, no, if they come with a warrant, they don't have time to show you proof. Yeah, they they don't have to show you anything. Right. But what are you gonna do when they come with a warrant? Well, I don't want to go to jail. No, you don't have to go to jail, but you you can pull out your camera. Yes. And yeah, you go on video. Yeah, as right. soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna make sure you guys know how to go on live. I'm gonna educate you guys on how to quickly go to save our birds. And then, uh, I know you're in the group, right? Save Our yeah, Birds? Yeah, I joined it. Have you joined, Richard? Uh, I'm not on Facebook. You're not on Facebook? No. I don't oh, man, it's our age group, dude. I know. <laughs> you know? I'm a little older than you, probably, so it's way past my time. You okay, 70 well, yesterday. Really? Yeah. You're young. You're perfect for it. You can lead a group. But what we can do is, do you have video on your phone? Yes, I do. Yeah, you can video, have, and then we can video, YouTube it. We have a regular camera that's video also. Yeah, but the regular camera is not on you. can't share it. No, no yeah. but it's not on you. That's right. You right. need to have your phone. Our, our phone is the best asset nowadays to control uh, people. Yeah. Okay, so, so make get sure. Get phone and turn it on right away. Right, but you should always be carrying your phone from now yes, on. Yes, Just, yeah. uh, I, I need to anyway in case I fall in the heart. Exactly. You need to get a belt. So that's a, that's what we can do. All right, folks. Um, I'm at uh, Cribs' this ha home. Actually, I'm at the crib, huh? That's kind of cool. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm with Donna and Richard, and I want to say thank you. Uh, you guys are awesome to make this a public issue, and hopefully um, we can get people. Hey, have you guys thought about taking this to your city hall? No, I haven't, but I think I could. Yes, yeah, I maybe get your community going. To the thing. Tonight uh, we're having uh, Harupa Valley uh, City Council. We're going to speak our three minutes. Okay. Oh, okay. So if it isn't too far of a drive for you. Yeah, I think it starts at seven. Everybody, we're asking everybody to show up by six thirty. Okay. okay, you have an address for that. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Signing out.